How's it going, everyone? Welcome back if you're familiar with us, and if you aren't, hello to you too. I'm Jonathan with Boston Collectors, and today we'll be unboxing and reviewing the Deluxe Mandalorian and Grogu set by Hot Toys. We have a lot to get into, so let's go ahead and get started. Around the lid of the packaging, we have a cigar wrap matching the previous Mandalorian releases, featuring the product info, as well as a photo of the figure. On the right side of the band, we have a photo of the Mandalorian, and on the left side, we have our standard product info. On the back of the box, you can find the legal information, hot toy store locations, and more. And lastly, we have the main photo of the Mandalorian and Grogu front and center above the embossed Star Wars logo. Ah, for those of you keeping track, <laughs> the Star Wars logo is present on the top and bottom of the box. Upon removing the lid, we're met with an art insert featuring the Mandalorian wandering the Dune Sea with some of the accessories included with the figure. This took quite a while to film, so we hope you all enjoy. If you like the content so far, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for future videos. Follow us over on Instagram and consider joining our community Discord server. With that said, let's dive in. Right out of the box, the figure is pre-equipped with relaxed hands. Different from the previous release, but hang tight. For now, I like that they're a bit wider than before. Not only are they perfect for some of the accessories included, but also just to look cool. Speaking of accessories, the detonator used during the Crate Dragon fight can fit into the relaxed hands without any issues. On the back, Hot Toys added some weathering to give the piece a bit of depth. If you'd like to store this piece on Mando, there's a hook on his belt for you to hang the detonator. It's a very tiny piece, but I love all of the intricate details included. Next, we have a loose thermal detonator. If you own any of the previous Mandalorian figures, this is no different. The other thermal detonators are static and they can't come off of the belt. However, I find the left and right trigger hand better suited to hold this. It's a very tiny piece that can get lost if you aren't careful. As far as storing the thermal detonator, it's friction fit into place. It isn't really the best, but I do wish there was a magnet to secure it a little bit better. Speaking of the trigger hands, the pair can be used to hold the IB-94 blaster pistol included. The only change that I noticed compared to the previous releases are the accents. The bronze color is highlighted much better here than before. Holstering isn't an issue here. In fact, it's relatively easy. After moving the strap out of the way, holster the blaster into the slot and feed the strap back through the loop. And when you're done, you're done. On the topic of weapons, Hot Toys included the Ambin Face Pulse Blaster. Again, nothing new to see here. All of the same functions that you'll see here exist from before. However, some collectors feel we didn't need it since it was blown up but Hot Toys are giving us options which range from two to three different moments in the series. So with that said, I'm glad it's included. Not only that, it enabled us to continue our own meanwhile moments in our display. One thing I do wish we had included was the electricity pulse from the rifle. If you own the Durasteel Mando, that accessory can attach to this gun. He did use it during the Crate Dragon fight, so I'm surprised to see it wasn't included. Holstering is the same as before as well. Locate the keyhole on the bandolier and simply key the clip into the insert. Afterwards, place the rifle on his back. From here, we'll have to locate and feed the clasp through the hole on his cape. I'd suggest being careful so that you don't create a bigger hole than necessary but you also may not care. I'm going to be careful though. Now that we're done, you can clasp the rifle to his back 
without putting too much stress on the chest insert than needed. As for the next accessory, we have the bag used to carry Grogu, which is a simple process to equip. It's got a rugged cloth feel to it without being canvas. I can't describe it any other way though. But I will say this, be careful how you place it on your figure. I'd suggest equipping with the strap on his left shoulder. On the right, I wouldn't want to put any unnecessary stress on the weapon strap unless the weapon overlapped the bag. Before placing Grogu in his temporary safe space, I noticed padding beneath the satchel. I'd imagine it keeps his feet from destroying the bottom and acts as a booster seat. <laughs> Speaking of Grogu, what's a Mandalorian release without one? Right away I noticed the neck articulation update. Not only that, it's an expression that I don't think we've seen before. It's more of an, an awe expression. Which I'd imagine we all had seeing Din's face for the first time. As for comparisons, the Grogu from the previous release is a little limited in terms of neck articulation. As a side note, the portraits can swap between the Grogu's, but they don't come off easily, at least for me. Outside of the neck articulation, the last noticeable difference is in the clothing along the middle. The newer Grogu's a bit cleaner. And now you can stow away Grogu and start your journey through the Dune Sea. Or whatever his journey is for you. For the next pair of hands, we have fists. Not only can they be used for stoic poses, but Mando can also go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a few death troopers or a few imps if you so choose. More importantly, they can be used for the other accessories which are included. The grappling hook, for example. This simply slides beneath the gauntlet. This one isn't new, so there's nothing out of the ordinary here. However, for the next accessory is a different installation process. After removing the gauntlet, you'll want to find an insert for the flamethrower effect. Again, nothing new if you're familiar with hot toys. From here, key the effect into the slot for the flamethrower to appear as if it's starting from the gauntlet properly. Place the gauntlet and the accessory back on and you're ready to pose. Hot Toys did a great job imitating fire from the way it start to the way it billow out. It's a much better installation process than what we're used to with Boba. Since we're talking about the arm accessories, let's move on to the left gauntlet. There's a tiny lip located on the back for you to pry the whistling birds off of the gauntlet. The pieces for this release aren't friction fit together. So you want to be careful not to overdo it and lose any of the parts. Let's go ahead and install the whistling bird effect. This come as one solid piece, so we won't have any issues with it. Simply line up the piece with the inserts on the gauntlet and you're set. This piece isn't heavy, so you won't have to worry about it weighing down Mando's arm. And if you haven't noticed already, on the tips of the smoke effect, you'll find the tiny whistling birds firing off. Or if that's too much, you can swap it off for an armed appearance instead. You'll need the previous piece from earlier though. One last thing, I noticed a slot on the left gauntlet. While there isn't a nozzle for the flame effect, you could slot it here if you wanted to. It ended up fitting perfectly. Again, it isn't canon, nor is there a way to fire it off, per se, but it's an option for someone. And lastly, as far as hands go, we have a new pair of weapon-holding hands to the Mandalorian. It's a more proper way of holding the other accessories included, but first I noticed something odd. This pair does appear a bit different from the others, which feature a line sectioning off the thumb. It's not an issue for me, but it's something to point out. With these hands, we can use the vibroblade included. There's nothing different here from the previous release either, but I'm happy to have it. Sheathing it is simple. In the right boot, you want to slide the blade down with the handle sticking out. Hot Toys didn't include installation in the instructions, but 
it can be found in the previous release. And next we have the Darksaber included with the Ignited feature. We've seen this once before with Moff Gideon's release, but this one doesn't come with a dynamic swinging effect. The D-Ring and details are all the same. Not to mention, it also come with a swap out hilt insert for an unlit appearance. As far as storing the Darksaber, you could have him place it on his belt. Although it technically doesn't belong here, it belongs on the left. Next, we have the Reclaimed Beskar Spear. While this is really cool in design, it's kind of flimsy. I'm not sure what Hot Toys could have done to make this feel any better, but I'd love to see a diecast release of The Mandalorian at some point, possibly featuring a diecast spear. Anyway, I do like the attention to detail found throughout. There are small areas of dimension to break up the monotonous design of having just a straight stick. And in case you forgot, this did survive the razor crest blowing up. The spear was unscathed. You might be asking though, why is his armor dirty if this is so pristine following an event like that? Hang tight, I have a theory. Getting back on topic, it's nice to have, but it is flimsy. I'd have preferred more of a harder plastic than this, but we'll revisit this in a second. For now, let's talk about the Rising Phoenix. Apart from the new paint job, we have a ring at the base of the jetpack. We'll also discuss this in a moment. Installation is the same as before. Let's go ahead and prepare by unclasping the rifle. After moving the cape out of the way, place the jetpack on his back and it will magnetize itself to Mando. Now that we're done, it's futzing with the wire cape for it to sell the look that we're going for. While Mando did fly around in season two, for whatever reason, Hot Toys didn't include the jetpack effects. Although, if you happen to have any extras laying around, they will fit. The bluing also received a slight upgrade with the chrome paint application. At this point, you could pull off the episode one appearance of Mando and you'd be set if you wanted. But let's go ahead and install the Beskar Spear. There's a necklace appearance to what will hold the Beskar Spear in place, but allow us to show you how it works. The spear is friction fit. With the padding on the inside, it will keep the spear from scratching and allow for some wiggle room to adjust. To install it on the figure, we'll need to remove the helmet pre-equipped out of the box. Next, we'll have to pull the cape over the neck and adjust the Beskar sheath beneath it, like so. Lower the cape back over the neck, and after a little bit of futzing, the installation is complete. From here, you'll want to feed the sheath off to the left and adjust the knots for it to hold it properly. With the helmet and jetpack equipped, we can store the Beskar on his back and adjust it as we see fit. It is possible to pull off the Ambin rifle and Beskar spear, but it looks a little crowded. Also, we never saw both equipped at once in the show. Before we show off the deluxe accessories, make sure to adjust the wrist pegs on both sides as you see here. This will not only allow for a greater range of motion, but it'll also keep you from possibly damaging the helmet. For the deluxe accessories, we have Boba Fett's armor, which can be seen on the reclaimed armor release. We have both the helmet and his jetpack, which isn't pre-equipped with a rocket since Cobb Vanth used it during the Crate Dragon fight. Next, we have the bigger package, which have part of Boba's armor and whatever else was salvaged from the wreckage. For the smaller package, the crate dragon meat used for food. Both bags feature a very subtle magnet attachment for them to store properly on your swoop bike. Speaking of the swoop bike, Hot Toys included a strap, which can be used to hold the bigger bag in place so that it doesn't topple over. Now to add the accessories to the swoop bike part. On the right side, we begin with Boba's helmet. Next, attach Mando's jetpack to the biggest package. From there, we can apply this piece to the swoop bike component. And for this side, we're all done. Feel free to adjust the accessories to fit your vision. 
For the right side, you'll want to add the jetpack first. And lastly, the crate dragon meat. The instructions showcase twisting some of the loops on the accessories, but I'd rather not tamper with them since they're delicate. From here on, it's really adjusting some of the pieces to go with the look you're going for. I actually like how it came out. By the way, the swoop bike part is made of plastic, so there's nothing die cast here, nor is the molded cloth made of soft goods. The quote unquote cloth is painted to appear that way, and I think they nailed it personally. It does make me wonder though, if this piece is plastic on the swoop bike or if it were modified as an accessory. I'll have to wait and see in the event that I pick one up, but I do like how it all came together. Closing out the accessories included with the Deluxe Mandalorian, we have the base featuring a tinfoil nameplate. It's a base design Hot Toys really enjoy putting out with pre-installed footprints. If you have the previous deluxe release, Grogu's Pram fits pretty nicely. The color and texturing isn't 100% the same, but the idea is here. Installing the included crotch holder is simple. With a little bit of muscle, you'll be able to lock it in place and adjust the piece to hold your figure. But before we do, what about compatible accessories? We'll keep it short. <laughs> Earlier, we mentioned the flame effect being able to install on the left gauntlet, so you could use two effects if you have another one lying around. Perhaps your Mando is still a bounty hunter. He can also use the tracking fob. Better yet, maybe he uses knee pad rocket dart launcher. You can use the effects from your Boba Fett release as well. If you picked up the Tuscan Raiders, he can also chill and have a black melon with the locals. On the topic of Raiders, you can also bribe them with a new pair of Binox. Now that the accessories are done, we can go ahead and place Mando on his base. If you haven't already, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more content. Let's go ahead and continue. From what I can tell, the articulation for the helmet is practically the same as it was before. You're able to make him look up at the imaginary light cruiser that destroyed his ship, or look down at the devastation caused by it, or Grogu. The major difference from any of the previous releases will obviously be the chrome paint application. What we've come to know about the Mandalorian's helmet is, he's kind of a minimal guy. We have your basics. The T-Visor on the front, the ear portions have a subtle design, and we have the ventilation system on the back. The main problem for a lot of collectors is the weathering found throughout the armor, but I feel it's to indicate the fight with the Crate Dragon. Sand does get everywhere and he was riddled with slime. Getting back on topic, with this release we have the swap out earpiece to install his torchlight. It's a very easy install. A little too easy, since there wasn't any friction. Also, this isn't a light-up piece, but it's meant to appear as if it's in use. And I feel it serves its purpose. Back to the weathering. I would have preferred a pristine appearance to the overall paint application, but I can't fault Hot Toys for the direction that they went with. It's grown on me. The helmet is also detachable from the neck joint although the joint in the helmet doesn't seem to come out easily. Unfortunately, there isn't any detail work in his bucket. Overall, I like the appearance of it in the updated paint application with the weathering. I think it looks pretty good. Before installing the portrait, we'll have to remove the helmet and its neck joint together. Since it's a molded neck piece, it's as easy as keying in the portrait into place. And the portrait is really nice. While I would have preferred more of a stoic expression, I'm not mad at what Hot Toys went with. 
It was a memorable scene and one that held a lot of impact. The sad expression mixed with the disheveled tufts of hair from removing his helmet to the way Hot Toys designed the rest of his hair to flow with his head. They did an amazing job and I have no complaints. Not to mention the subtle shadow in his facial hair. It all blends together really, really nicely. Speaking of the hair, there's a lot of motion and layers indicating helmet head. As we move towards the front, it's very neat, but still kind of helmet head-like, which I'm not against. In terms of his facial features, you're able to get a sense of the sadness in his face through the various lighting changes you'll see coming up. Throughout all of the lighting in this section, to more controlled lighting seen here, the portrait comes to life. From the brilliant artist at Hot Toys, I genuinely have nothing bad to say about Yuli Choi's work. If you'd like to follow her on Instagram, her information can be found in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. Lighting is everything when taking into account the portrait design. It's why we decided to start showcasing the portraits this way. What do you think about Pedro Pascal's likeness? So last year, I purchased an extra season one Hot Toys Mandalorian body because the joints on my original figure felt a little frozen. With it, I was able to remove the neck joint and add the portrait. Although I don't like how close it is to the shoulder blades. You could run the risk of damaging the lower neck mode if you aren't careful. While it does work, apply at your own risk. For the transport trooper, disassembly will occur in three pieces, the helmet, the body, and the neck. You could simply apply the portrait as is seen here, but there's one problem. He's got a bit of a giraffe-esque neck going on that can put you off. So let's go ahead and help him out. I purchased this neck sleeve for $1.99 from Toy Anxiety. It's used with the Bat Batch Echo and fits perfectly. With that simple fix, it changes everything. I've seen collectors place the Transport Trooper neck piece in hot water to allow it to stretch around the neck easier, but it's too much of a risk for me personally. If you don't want to purchase any additional pieces though, that's your best option. Or maybe you don't even care. It makes it easier for you, actually, because the portrait is nothing short of incredible on the Mandalorian body. If you own any of the previous Mandalorian figures, then you have an idea of what you're getting into with this release as far as the articulation. For the most part, you can get them in standard poses that aren't too dynamic. Hot Toys didn't change anything from what I can tell in terms of his overall body. You have your butterfly joints, a cut at the bicep, as well as the double jointed elbows, soft ratchet double jointed knees, and a split cut boot. When I envisioned the best Hot Toys body, it would be something like this. The only issue is the bodysuit, which I'll be modifying after this review, like I did the others. If anything, I wanted to show the differences between this release as well as the previous one. You'll notice a lot more grit and grime on the latest version versus a cleaner approach from the one before. Not only that, but we also have the obvious change in the paint application. I'd have preferred a brushed silver, but it is pure Beskar. Dendron is also allowed to pee this time around since Hot Toys decided to go ahead and give him a fly. As seen earlier in the accessories portion, Mandel upgraded his armor a bit and comes with the knee pad rocket dart launcher. I also noticed the welding mark missing on this release as well. Throughout the entire design, you can tell Hot Toys meant to replicate Mandel's appearance after defeating the crate dragon. So the grime reflects that. A minor detail change, but the Ambin Phase Pulse Blaster clasp is also a different color. And I'm not sure why red data isn't present on the gauntlet this time, so it appears disabled versus the previous one. Next, we have a very noticeable change in his cape. 
The latest release being the most worn and shortest includes wiring along the sides and the bottom. Another minor change, but the relaxed hand is a little more relaxed than before. Lastly, there isn't a height difference, which works in tandem with the previous releases. This is truly more of an upgrade overall to what we've had before. But would you have preferred pristine armor versus weathered? As of late, we've been focusing this section on figure comparisons in terms of how well they look together versus height comparisons. Let us know down below which one you prefer the most. In terms of height, we have the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian, Bo-Katan Kryze, the Season 1 Mandalorian, the Armorer, the Transport Trooper featuring Din's portrait, the Reclaimed Armor Boba Fett, the Dark Trooper, IG-11, the Death Watch Mandalorian, the Death Trooper, Moff Gideon, the Tusken Raider, and last but not least, Grogu. In closing, I really do enjoy everything this figure has to offer, but I couldn't recommend purchasing the deluxe version. The only reason I did is because I have the swoop bike in mind. If I had to say, I'd suggest saving that money towards another figure. Unless you really love the accessories, then by all means go for it, because they are pretty cool. With everything included, it was a treat to play with all of the pieces, but filming was a different story. <laughs> I have to note, I had a defect on my figure that I ended up having to patch because of the glue hot toys used. If you're adjusting the belt, exercise caution and do it gently or else you will have to fix it too. With all that said, I'd have to give this figure a 9 out of 10. As mentioned earlier, there are a few accessories that I feel they should have provided, and they weren't. It's a beautiful piece though, and it isn't something you regret purchasing. This is as good as it gets right now, at least until Season 3. We appreciate you all being patient with us as we worked on this video for you. Thank you so much for watching and consider liking this video for us. Subscribe for more content and stay tuned. Axe Wolves is on the way. And as always, it doesn't matter what we rate the figure. If you like it, we love it. Catch you on the flippity flop.